What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Casual Big Ten Podcast. Today is Thursday, December 7th, 2023. My name is Kent Peterson. I am the host of this show. And on today's show, got a quick hitter episode, all basketball. We're just talking hoops today. Going to talk about five topics that I think deserve to be talked about at this point in the season. Get you guys excited for what's coming up this weekend and some teams that have done some awesome, maybe even some unbelievable things up until this point in the early basketball season. So exciting. Very exciting time, especially because football's done basically at this point, except for the bowl games. Um, it's exciting to have Big Ten action in basketball and some awesome uh, non-conference games as well to go with it. What do we have coming up on the show, though? Real quickly, as always, don't forget to subscribe if you're listening or watching on YouTube. If you're on a podcast app, five-star ratings. That'd be great. Don't have to. If you're just listening in the car, you know what? I appreciate you. I appreciate you listening to it, as always. Uh, make sure you're following along on Twitter at Casual Big Ten. We will have the Bet Big Bowl Game episode. Triple B, Bet Big Bowl Games coming up. I thought we were going to do it. <coughs> oh, my God. <coughs> the alliteration made me sick. Um, thought we were going to do it this week, but, uh, you know, schedules are a little tight this time of year. So I think we'll push it back to next week and uh, let it breathe a little bit. Maybe let the lines change, do a little bit more research on um, which guys are playing maybe would be helpful. Which guys are transferring and not playing? Which guys are sitting out because they're going to the NFL? I don't know. We'll figure stuff like that out before we do the Bet Big Bowl Game episode. Triple B episode. Um, we'll also have more basketball coverage as we uh, wind down football season. Be able to shift my focus a little bit more towards hoop and maybe some extended basketball episodes and possibly some guests. Don't have anybody lined up right now, but I've I've been thinking about it. I've I've definitely been thinking about it. All right, let's get into these topics. Uh, the first quick hitter topic that I have, like I said, I have five of them, uh, is Northwestern. What a win that was the other night. They played Purdue at home, picked up the 92-88 to overtime victory just like they did last year. I don't think it was overtime last year, but beat Purdue at home just like they did last year. Shocking. Shocking. I didn't think that Purdue was going to lose this year. In fact, this might be the only game that they lose. It's good to get one early, I suppose. They've beaten three better teams than Northwestern, in my opinion, just based on what my eyes have been telling me already this year. But just an amazing job um, from Chris Collins and the rest of the Northwestern players. I know he's not a player, but the game plan was great. I love Chris Collins. If you've ever listened to me talk about basketball, I can't go a basketball episode without mentioning that guy. I think he's the best coach. I think he gets his guys the most prepared. And that was obvious the other night when they played Purdue. Uh, they were very prepared for this game. Uh, what a game for December, though. Early December game, you get an upset of a number one ranked team in the country at the hands of the Cats. <laughs> the Cats. Um, I always think of that gif when I think about Northwestern. I posted a lot on Twitter. The Cat. Cat attack. Uh, it was a cat attack the other night, but the stars were out big time. Boo Booey, 31 points, kind of put the team on his back, but he had help too. We'll talk about that more in just a second. Zach Eady, 35 points, 70, almost 70 points. <laughs> it's not quite 70, is that? Let me do the math real quick. 66 points out of those two guys. Really impressive. For a college basketball game to have 66 points from just two guys, even though they were on different teams. Um, Purdue is still very good. Like, let's not get this. I don't think anyone is, by the way. Anyone that's watched Purdue, I think that we know that they're poised to be maybe a number one ranked team throughout the year. And definitely a number one ranked seed team when the, uh, the big dance starts. What are we calling that? Because I hate calling it the big dance. The NCAA tournament. I think that's what it's called. When the NCAA tournament starts, I think that Purdue still could have, if not the number one overall seed, at least a number one seed in one of the regions still at this point. I think that they're that good. Here's how they lost the other night, though. One of the best three-point shooting teams in the Big Ten going into this game, they went 5-for-19. And if you were watching the game or if you're a basketball 
um, expert like myself, I'll call myself, it really wasn't. Now listen, the guards, the guards guarded Purdue's guards very well. Man, I'm putting these words together real nice tonight, aren't I? The guards from Northwestern guarded the guards from Purdue really well. But from what I was watching, it was really a testament to what uh, Nicholson and Barnheiser were doing on the inside, not having to always double team Zach Eady. Now, they did double team him. They did double team him when they needed to, but they weren't always double teaming him. And that allowed the guards to kind of move around. Um, and Purdue does a great job moving around. But it allowed the defense to be able to stick with their guy a little bit more and uh, guard the three a little bit better. Like I said, five for 19 from Purdue. You're not going to see that very often this year. Speaking of stars, a star has to have a sidekick, right? For Northwestern, it's Ty Berry. I tweeted out the other night that both Ty Berry and Braden Smith are very improved from where they were last year. And it's really difficult if you had to choose one of them to be the most improved player in the entire conference, I think. I thought we saw them playing against each other the other night. Um, in my opinion, it's Ty Berry, though. I look at a guy like Ty Berry, and I compare him to a guy like A.J. Hogart. Who would you rather have on your team right now? Ty Berry, 21 points, hit some huge shots coming down the stretch in this game, especially at the end of regulation. I think he was really the reason that they were able to get to overtime um, just a consistent player, like I said, hits big shots and uh, just really fun watching him play this year. I think that he's doing a great job stepping up to that role that really, you know, kind of Boo Booey kind of took over most of the point guard stuff that Chase Audige was doing last year. He's got the ball in his hand a lot more, but Ty Berry is really kind of taking what Boo Booey was last year, I thought. You know, Chase and... I, it's hard to say because last year they were both kind of going back and forth who was a better player each game. But uh, they still have it now at that guard position. It just went from Chase and Boo to now it's Ty and Boo. And Chase is in the NBA. So uh, really fun to see Northwestern get that win. Um, not going to lie, I was cheering for them. I know Purdue's going to win plenty of games this year, so I was I was excited to see Northwestern pull off a big upset at home. And uh, I'm always excited to see Northwestern do well. I just am. I don't know what to say about it. I just am. I just like Northwestern. Uh, let's switch gears a little bit. A team that is not playing very well right now is Michigan State. I still, I said this last week, I, I'm not worried about Michigan State, but they're, we're getting to a point now where the alarm bells are starting to go off just a touch. They entered their first Big Ten conference game of the year at 4-3, and three. And they drew Wisconsin at home for that first game. Wisconsin is really good. I think that I'm going to talk about them next. If you're watching on YouTube, you know that because it's on the sidebar. We'll talk about them more in a second. But let's go back to Michigan State. Tough schedule to start. And they have no one to blame but themselves because basketball teams make their own schedules for the most part. You have Duke and Arizona. You lost the James Madison game. So those are your three losses. And then you have Wisconsin which, by the way, they lost this game at home, 70-57. to 57. So now you're at four. Coming up for them, non-conference, they still have number six, Baylor. And then they have a really tough Oakland team who just beat Xavier, which we're not sure how good Xavier is, but they did play Purdue pretty tough a few weeks back. So, man, it's going to be tough for Michigan State. It's going to be tough. I don't think that. I don't think that if you're Michigan State, you want to enter – the remaining Big Ten conference schedule with six losses. And that's possible at this point. I, I, I for sure think they're going to have five because I don't think that they're going to beat Baylor. And then they have some other tough teams. Like I said, Oakland is one of them. I don't know if they'll lose that game, but they could drop another one that they're not supposed to, a la James Madison at the beginning of the year. Um, four and four right now in the conference, 0 and 1 in the Big Ten. Listen, I know it's early, but... I'm just going to tell you what I'm reading. A lot of people talking about Michigan State, and it's mainly Michigan State fans, by the way. Maybe Michigan State, this is the year that they don't make the tournament, which is insane considering the amount of talent that they have on their team. Now, I'm good friends with a couple of Michigan State people, so obviously I'm a little bit more connected to this than uh, most people, I would say. I'm hearing that there's no leader. 
I'm hearing that there's no drive from the team. I'm hearing from, uh, not from them specifically, but from other people on Twitter that maybe Tom Izzo is a bit past what he used to be at this point. I don't know. Here's what I do know, though. Michigan State has a history of starting off not very good. Maybe not this bad, but not very good. Figuring stuff out. Getting the right guys in the right positions. Getting the rotations down. Getting the sets down. Figuring out who the go-to guy is, which, by the way, is Tyson Walker, in case you didn't know. And winning just enough games in the conference to make a little bit of a push in the Big Ten tournament and get a decent seed in the NCAA tournament and then go play for three weekends. It seems like they do it all the time. So the last team that I'm going to write off at 4-4 four and four is going to be Michigan State. I'm just not going to do it at this point. Now, if they start getting a couple games under 500 and it looks like they might not make the tournament, I might start writing them off. This might be the year. It might be the year, but right now, I'm just not ready to do it. Speaking of Wisconsin, who I was just talking about, like I said, they might be the second best team in the Big Ten. Hell, they might be the first best team in the Big Ten based on how they've been playing lately. It's crawl, it's wall, from the crawl to the wall till the ball goes down. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. I had that in my head for some reason. When I when I see crawl and wall, I just think of that song. We got to get some lyrics for that. Um, They've been great. They have been fantastic. And, uh, oh, by the way, let's get the best transfer that's come to the Big Ten in A.J. Store. He might win Rookie of the Year. Is there a Rookie of the Year trophy? If there's not, I'm making one. And it's going to go to anyone that transferred into the Big Ten, this is their first year, or any freshman can win this award. If it's your first year playing in the conference, you can win this award. And right now, the award would firmly be in the hands of A.J. Store. He's been fantastic. I talked about him this summer. I was early on this guy. He's really good, and he's really switched the old-school Wisconsin way of let's slow it down. No, he wants to go score points, and now everybody else is kind of feeding off that. They still have Chucky Hepburn. Did you guys know that? He's still there. I was surprised he came back, actually. Um, not that he was going to go to the NBA, but I thought maybe transfer. I don't know what he was going to do. And then Connor Asijan, sophomore year. He's getting better every game. The, you, that's five guys right there. Most teams don't even have two or three guys that I could mention as someone that could take over a game. There's five. There's five. There's two guys down low that could get you a huge offensive rebound or defensive rebound when you need one. You got a legitimate scorer. You have a guy that's a veteran at point guard. I mean, this is a quintessential NCAA tournament team right here. It's got everything that you want. Experience, athleticism, uh, a post presence, and then scorers they have two of them they have connor and aj so really good team they beat marquette they beat virginia they beat michigan state i mean talk about resume builder sorry i got an itch in my nose talk about resume they don't need to build their resume they're definitely going to make the tournament but those are three pretty big wins at the beginning of this year already so like i said maybe start talking about them as the second best team in the big 10 maybe the first Maybe the first. I wanted to look this up, and I forgot to do it. I'm going to do it while I start talking about this other team. I wanted to see when they're playing Purdue. Because they they have to have Purdue on their schedule, right? Let's just do it right now, because i got it pulled up. All right, let's full schedule. Um, pull it up. We're going to scroll down. Purdue is on February 4th. Wow, we got a long wait until then. Got a long wait until then. That's going to be a great game, though. I'm I'm circling my calendar right now. February 4th. All right. Next team I want to talk about that I forgot to put on my sidebar. I always forget one. This week it was Illinois. Last week it was Northwestern. Sorry, Illinois. Uh, really big win for them the other night. I think it was two nights ago now. They beat uh, number 11 FAU at the, at, at the Madison Square Garden. I watched the first 10 minutes of this game, and I didn't think anyone was going to score. It was ugly and really good defense at the beginning of the game. Then I had to go take care of some stuff. I come back, and the final score is 98 to 89. Huh? How'd they score that many points? I have no idea. Uh, did miss most of this game, but, you know, great win for Illinois, though, nonetheless. They uh, also went to Rutgers this year. This is Illinois I'm still talking about, and wiped them out by 18 points at the rack. 
So those are two big wins that they got away from home already. Now, Rutgers might not be a big win, but it's a conference win nonetheless. You have Terrence Shannon Jr. He's averaging over 21 points a game. TSJ. TSJ, I'm going to start calling him. I, I just I feel like that kind of rolls off the tongue. Everything for him seems to be coming a little bit smoother than it was last year. If you remember last year watching him play, especially in their losses, it felt like Terrence was kind of forcing the issue to try to get buckets and forcing the issue through the defense. And he's always been a really smooth player, but it just feels like everything's coming to him this year instead of him trying to force it. He's looking really good. But I will say one negative about Illinois. I would expect if you want to be a team that's going to be at the top of the conference and going to compete in March, I'm expecting more out of Ty Rogers and Coleman Hawkins. Both of them are averaging less than seven points a game. They hit shots when they need to, it seems like. I know Coleman hit a big one the other day against FAU, a big three. But, um, man, I would just expect, especially from Hawkins, he's been, man, what is it? There's like something. I'm allergic to something in this office right now. My big nose is so itchy right now. I feel like I just got sick as I was recording. Sorry. Um, it probably looks like I'm doing cocaine right now. I'm not. I'm not doing that. But um, looking, what what was I just talking about? Col Coleman Hawkins. I, I'm just expecting more out of him in general if Illinois is going to be a team that is going to compete uh, long term. All right. Upcoming schedule. I do have this on the sidebar. This weekend, we have six big games. We have Illinois going to Tennessee. My mind just got totally sidetracked with that itchy nose. Uh, Illinois going to Tennessee. Massive game. This will be like, this will really start putting Illinois on the map nationally and as a contender in the Big Ten Conference period this year. If they can go beat Tennessee, a Tennessee team who I feel like is in the Big Ten this year, isn't that their fourth game against Big Ten teams? If you count the preseason one against Michigan State, they played Wisconsin and they played, or I'm sorry, uh, yeah, Wisconsin, and they played um, Purdue in the Maui Invitational. So this is their fourth time playing a Big Ten team. Speaking of Wisconsin, once again, they are going to Arizona, and big game for them, especially on the road. Both of those games on the road is going to be really tough. Purdue's got a nice opponent this weekend. This is all on Saturday, by the way. Massive day for basketball on Saturday. Alabama coming to Mackey Arena. We'll see what they bring to the table against a Purdue team that's coming off of a loss. I didn't think I would say that this year, but I am. Um, also on Saturday, Big Ten matchup, Ohio State versus Penn State. Penn State looks bad. Penn State looks really bad. I expect Ohio State to win that game. And then on Sunday, you have the two Michigan schools traveling out west just a bit. Michigan going to Iowa. A couple teams that, man, they could both really use this win. Iowa's about to play Iowa State tonight um, in about an hour. So I'm excited to watch that game, especially because it's the only game for the next two days. So I'll be locked into that one. But uh, both of these teams really need a win. Iowa's going to need this for the Big Ten Conference and just in general. And then Michigan, I think they've lost four in a row now. And then also on Sunday, struggling, I'm going to call them Michigan State versus Nebraska, who has now dropped two after starting the year 7-0. and oh. Embarrassing loss last night for them at Minnesota. They were up by, what was it, 15 at halftime and then just could not score. I read on Twitter that they only hit two shots in the second half, which... I watched the entire game. I didn't even think it was that bad. Bryce Williams for Nebraska was going off in the first half. He had 17, and then he finished with 18. Hit a free throw, and that's it in the second half. So uh, you have Kasey for Nebraska, too. He just didn't look that good to me. Um, and I say he did look that good. He was 0 for 5 from 3, I believe, last night. So Michigan State comes to town. Is Nebraska legit, or is Michigan State going to get back Man, I'm not joking about what is going on up here. What the hell is going on up here? All right. Um, so Michigan State at Nebraska. I got to finish this thing up. I was going to talk about the standings, but let's be honest. It's a little too early to even care about the standings, especially when a team like Purdue is 0-1, so they're like in the middle of the conference right now. I don't think it really matters at this point. I put it on the sidebar. It's the sidebar. I put it on a sidebar, and uh, I don't even really want to talk about it. Not everyone's even played two conference games yet. You know, there's some really good teams that are 0 and 1, 
Like, uh, I still think Iowa's a really good team. I'm looking at the standings now. Um, and then you have, like, Purdue, like I said, one and one. They're tied with Minnesota right now. That's not how it's supposed to look. Purdue's supposed to be at the top. Minnesota's supposed to be at the bottom. Weird. Maryland's right there at one and one. They're not very good. They barely beat Penn State yesterday. That was... They should not have won that game. That was also an overtime game. Um, so the standings don't really matter right now. I'm just going to skip that, especially because I'm obviously catching something up here in this. I don't know if it's my desk. What the? I don't know what's going on. It's weird. Maybe I'm just on drugs. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I need to take some medicine. So I do feel like I just got sick in the middle of this recording. It was really weird. All right. Uh, like I said, upcoming next week, we'll have that triple B episode. Bet big bowl game edition um with bet big brad and b1g wheelie son we'll be back next week with that some more basketball coverage i'll try not to get uh any debris in my big nose from now until then but uh like i said please subscribe on youtube man my brain's so lost tonight subscribe on youtube hit follow on twitter at casual big 10 and uh if you're listening on a podcast drive safely I'm assuming you're driving, so drive safely. We'll see you guys next week. We will see you guys in the future.